Speaking of Oklahoma, Oklahoma certainly was the greatest musical comedy success in the history of Broadway, wasn't it? Yes, oh, I think that's undoubtedly yes. true. I love Oklahoma myself. The success is doubly delicious and tasteful to you in view of uh, the way you and Dick tried to peddle it for backers. Yes, well, it was hard to finance in those days. We didn't uh, have any stars, and those who were putting up money for plays thought that stars were necessary. In these auditions, I used to sing Poor Judd, and Terry Halburn of the Guild used to be the narrator of the plot, and Dick used to play the piano. We went from uh, penthouse to penthouse. <laughs> Dick, it really is interesting looking back when you realize the fantastic run that Oklahoma had, which established a record on Broadway, that you and Oscar had so much difficulty in getting back as far. Why do you think that was so? I think that if you look at the lineup of Oklahoma and the people connected with it, there wasn't anything very inviting about it. A tremendous record of failure. I had had ten very, very good years with Larry, but everybody else had had ten horrible years, if they had had any. The Theatre Guild had had a list of failures, and this was their last try. So this is not very conducive to an investor to put his money in the show. Oscar hadn't had a hit in almost 11 years. Mamoulian, no success for a long time. Agnes DeMille had done nothing. She was a nice little choreographer. But she had never done a Broadway show, and that was that. We had no stars. We had a nice boy by the name of Alfred Drake. Very few people had ever heard of him. Joan Roberts, nothing. Celeste Holm, very little. Then it went even further than that. What was it about? This is about cowboys and farmers. Nothing spicy in it. I don't know if I told you about the game that Mr. Rogers and I often play, explaining why Oklahoma was a dire failure. No. <laughs> well, let's assume it was a failure. Mm -hmm. it only ran four or five weeks. I can tell you why. And why two professional men like Mr. Rogers and I could have made so many mistakes, one would wonder. The girls' chorus did not appear in Oklahoma until the curtain had been up for 40 minutes. One of our best songs, Oh, What a Beautiful Morning, was wasted in the first three minutes of the play while the audience was still being seated. Theoretically, and nobody should have heard it. That's right. Well, what's the story of Oklahoma? The first act is about a girl who decides which man to go to a dance with, Judd or Curly. There is almost no other plot in the first act. In the smokehouse scene, Judd and Curly get dramatic for a moment. But they're still arguing about the same issue. Who's going to take this girl to the dance? That's hardly a momentous conflict. Hardly a momentous conflict. How could the play possibly have been a success? In the second act, no important new numbers came into the score. They were all reprises of numbers that were in the first act and two or three minor numbers in the second, except Oklahoma, the number Oklahoma. And then on top of that, Oscar and I were working together for the first time. Who knew whether this combination would work or not? They were sure in my case that it wouldn't. Why? Because I'd had all these years with Hart, and suddenly came the split. They knew that I had to fail. This scared an awful lot of money away. I know one moving picture company that ran away from it for that very reason. And you can't argue people out of that attitude. Well, you see how dangerous this pastime is, and you can now switch and talk about why Oklahoma was a success, and you'll never know whether you were right or wrong. We know that it was a success. Why it was a success is a matter of conjecture, of opinion, and perhaps many conflicting opinions. Well, of course, one of the songs in Oklahoma that has always touched millions of people very deeply, but none more deeply than you, is the Surrey with That's the Prince. Right, I, I love that. Uh, I understand, Oscar, that you have literally and actually been moved to tears every time you've heard it was sung. Yes, it's interesting my crying at the Surrey because it illustrates what I cry at. I don't cry at sadness in the theater. I cry at naive happiness. The fact that two people are looking forward with great anticipation to a ride in a Surrey to a dance makes me cry. I can see the stars getting blurry when we drive back home in the Surrey. Driving slowly home in the Surrey with the fringe on top. The sun is swimming on the rim of a hill. The moon is taking a header. And just as I'm thinking all the earth is still, a lark will wake up in the meadow. Hush, you bird, my baby's a-sleepin'. Maybe got a dream worth a-keepin'. Whoa, you team, and just keep a creepin' at a slow clip-clop. Don't you hurry with the surrey, with the free.